density of the roads prior to construction to give us some idea of what we're going to have to do. So this was part of that uh, road construction project that's just under the And it's a $2,764 that we owe for the testing engineers for the work that they did. Yeah, so that's the engineers for the work that they did. So, Meta, am I correct in what I'm saying? Yes. Um, their proposal was approved originally for as needed basis, and this is what they spent during the construction. So, this has already been approved and paid, we're just receiving and filing the information? Uh, no. Uh, they originally gave us a proposal for, for hourly, okay. and this is the actual time spent. Okay. Make a motion that we approve the testing, engineers, and consultants road, dense, uh, road project density test for $2,764. Support. The proper move that supported that we approve this payment to the, the testing engineers in the amount of $2,764. Any questions on the motion? Actually, if I may, it uh, looks like it might be $2,764.40. Yep, the All right, so uh, make amendment $2,764.40. Any question on the motion? Roll, please. Trustee Myson? Yes. Trustee Feinhorn? Yes. Trustee Ballinger? Yes. President Dilbert? Yes. Did you call Mr. Picoli? So he's not going to be counted as absent? No, no, no. He's participating over Zoom. I misunderstood that. I apologize. Item B, GLWA. Uh, we were informed by the Great Lakes Water Authority a couple months ago that we've exceeded our daily allowance. Um, our current contract calls for 0.6 um, MCF, no, 0.6 MGD. It's million gallons a day. It's where we break it down. It amounts to a lot of water. And what had happened is that with the new construction, uh, we're losing a lot more water than what we had contracted for. And we also found out that River Brook had a water main break that they did not um, react to after a few days. And we also found out that Riverbrook and Meadow Creek sprinkler systems were malfunctioning for about a month. They were running content for about a month. So we used a lot of water. A lot of water. Um, <clears throat> so, of course, they contacted us. We had a Zoom meeting. And they have in place a procedure where they would take this exceedance and give it to a committee, and they could really um, charge us a, a lot of money for exceeding our contract. So we had a second Zoom meeting that I got involved in, and we negotiated a rate that we think will accommodate uh, the current rate of construction and we shouldn't have to worry about exceeding the only the only thing that could come into play would be a major water main break or something like what happened out in Riverbrook and they didn't react to it. And I know why they didn't react to it because they just they just passed on the excess water to the residents. Mm -hmm. you know? um, so we negotiated a rate, and uh, what I'm going to recommend is that our new rate is uh, point, point 0.785 MGD, which will take us up to calendar year 2022. And that should accommodate um, 
that continue to grow in the village. As we look at our graphs on a weekly basis, we can see when there are peaks and there's valleys and there's trends. And, and we also argue with um, 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 Greenwich Water Authority that the fact that everyone is home right now during this pandemic is that there's a lot more water being used. So they, uh, they accepted our argument and they agreed to this new rate. Um, and so they're going to take it to their board for approval. But we had to get approval from this board prior. And with the, with the, what was it, MG, MG, um, so like how does that, how does that really affect us? I mean, if it's 0.785 versus 0.6. It's, give me the breakdown, uh, some edits for, uh, Sandy, what does the 0. 0.6, how many gallons a day does that translate into? A million gallons per day. That's okay. Right. So is that, it's just essentially like how much they're billing us for? That's how much we can use up to. That's what we're contracting for. So if we, use, if we use more than the 0. 0.785, which I know this is allowing for growth, but just if we use more, then what happens is it's like? We have a cap of 1.1. 1. 1. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So we have a. 1.1 max day. Um, the contract is a strange contract, and I totally don't agree with it, but it's how they write their contracts. Um, and we have this range where they can penalize us if we don't use enough, and they can penalize us if we use too much. So these numbers are, you know, we compile these numbers based on history and past practice, and we kind of build in for you know some of the unknown that may happen. So we think that we're in a good range right now that's 0.875. Is this contract written in a way where it's uh, actual usage or will it do like an average weekly usage? The we actually pay for what we actually use. So when we have one really bad week and we go over that amount it can penalize us then? No, no, there's an average. Okay. There's an average. For not having a story though. Yeah. What? They're not going to say that there is a... What? They all have a max day also. They pick a day out of the year during yeah, the summer. Day, yeah. And if, they, if you're over it, then you are. If you're under it, then you're safe. Yeah. It's only <coughs> one day. Max day is 1.1. So the max day is really way above what we actually do. Did you hear all that, uh, trust for color? Yeah. Okay. It's a strange way to write a contract, but that's the way the Great Next Water Authority and all their users, and that's how the board of directors set it up. So with that being said, I make a motion that we adopt the GLWA contract for, um, 0.785 MGD. Second. We'll probably move and support it that we adopt this 0.785 MGD from the Great Lakes Water Authority. If I may add, there was some suggestion that we adopt even a higher rate, but the higher rate would have cost us additional money up front. So I'm confident that this rate right here will will satisfy the growth that is taking place right now. If we suddenly boom, then we need to come back and, and, and look at this again. When is this effective? It's in effect until 2022. Because the document states for 2022. Yeah, that's when it actually, well, it's, it's in effect, right? It's not going to affect once they adopt it, isn't it, Samet? Yes, it's in effect right, right now, yeah. once you adopt it. Yeah. And then the fiscal year is in July. That's when the next opener would be. And if okay. we need to negotiate a higher right. cap, we're going to do that next year. In 2022. Yeah, the third opener, this is like a 30 year contract, and there's an opener every five years.
Correct me on motion. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. I don't see the MERS contract. Sandy, would you come up and... Mm -hmm. We have our defined contribution plan and MERS is asked, because of all this COVID that's been happening, they want us to reiterate what wages we're paying for our 5% of the employer portion of the, of the retirement, our retirement plan. This is just reiterating that we pay only gross wage. We don't pay any allowances. So it's basically reiterating what we do pay and have had paid before, and we're gonna keep the same thing that we've been doing. So for instance, like the hazard pay is kind of a wage. So we did pay um, the employer portion of that. Gas allowance, coal allowance, um, what else? Totally Anything with allowance we don't pay on. That's what I'm. That we're, that's what I'm trying to get at. So this this will here will just make sure that we just pay on wages and not any kind of phone allowance or anything like that happens with, with um, the employees. So we only we don't pay any allowance through payroll anyways. So I doubt it will ever happen that we get we'll pay it anyway. But this is just reiterating the fact that we always will be paying for the wage on this thing. Does that make sense? I'm trying to make sense. Is it a yearly uh, requirement? Not necessarily. I haven't seen this in a while. So this is this is all came up with COVID. They want to make sure everybody is paying what they want because all the different pays that are coming across across the board and people are paying stuff for it. So this is this doesn't usually happen every year. This is the first time I've seen this. I think the last time it's been like three years ago. Really? It's been a while. So I can go look back, but I I, I don't remember doing this last year. I don't remember this. So but this will become effective on January 2021 and it'll be for next year. Uh, do we have to adopt this, or this is for? It's an adoption agreement. We have to adopt it. Yes. We have to adopt it. Okay. We just got that motion. We set that motion on it. The, okay. It was approved by the village of Haven tonight. Any questions? Does that make sense? Any questions for Sandy? Okay. Motion in order. I make a motion that we approve the mayor's defined <coughs> contribution adoption agreement. Okay. The property moved and supported that we adopt this MERS agreement. Any questions on the motion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Item D is another MERS agreement, and I know this one pertains to the fire department. It does. So this 457 participation agreement is basically like a private sector 401k. This would be an employee contribution, and this is an amendment to what we have in place already, but for the fire department to be added onto it. They had asked us before the COVID if we would do this for them. And COVID got messed up and we never did get it settled and get to get this um, agreement put in place. So basically all this is doing is ask, making them eligible, the full-time, part-time, paid on call, fire department, fire people, to be able to um, contribute if they wanted to. So it would be an employee contribution and an employer contribution. And we had told them back, I don't remember, I think it was, might have been February or March, that we would take, take, do this for them. And so we're finally doing it. It will be, um, effective January for them to be able to contribute to themselves. Employee. Employee, not, not the employer portion, no. And I, I see that the contributions, it says weekly, but I think don't we, don't we pay most of the fire department quarterly or? Well, I put weekly on there for the fact that we have part time people that are weekly. Right. We have weekly, monthly, and quarterly for these people who get paid. So, whatever, okay. it's a, that part portion is okay. I mean, I'll be reporting weekly anyway. I report weekly anyway, so if somebody adds on and didn't do it, they'll actually, so I, I do report weekly now, so it'll cover everybody. Any questions? 
What's the pleasure? I make a motion that we approve the Mayor's 457 Fire Department Participation Agreement. Support. And the property movement support it that we adopt this Mayor's 457 Agreement pertaining to the Fire Department's contribution. Any questions on the motion? Those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. I don't e. I was, I was giving a tour of the fire base um, in the lighting out there, which in my opinion was, was all taken in the tunnel was built. So um, we had started about a year ago getting some prices, and so I asked the uh, chief and assistant chiefs to bring this back up, see if they can get some up-to-date quotes. And the one that they, the best one that they come up with, or the one that they come up with, um, is in front of them. And it's a $7,800 quote to replace the uh, lights in the fire base with a $2,769 rebate, which brings the actual, <coughs> excuse me, which brings the actual cost down to $5,030.40. Uh, when you turn on the lights out there, you have to wait for them to warm up. Um, and if you happen to turn them off and you turn them back on, you gotta wait for them to cool off. Uh, it's really not a good situation. Um, and the replacement bulb for the existing fixtures out there are very expensive and hard to find and they don't last very long. So this pole right here would give them the nice LED bright um, and even the the energy savings. Yeah. I was gonna say the proposal says that it's only gonna take like one point seven four years to, to regain to right. the cost. Pay it back. So yeah. that's that's a no brainer. Mm -hmm. um, even though we're still having, you know, we, we uh, haven't finalized where we stand with this building, I think that, you know, it's a certain investment that we need to take, but I would hate for someone to get hurt um, walking around in the dark. Sure. You know, so. I make motion that we um, accept the energy specialties group uh, quote for the uh, total amount of, do you want the total amount before or after the rebate? After the rebate? Mm -hmm. All right, total uh, cost being $7,800 uh, after the rebate of $2,769.60 for estimated contract price of $5,030.40. Support that. Okay. The proper move that supported that we accept this proposal from from Energy Specialty Group to replace the lagging in the fire department base. Any questions on the motion? I do. Who second that? It's not like two people said it at once. Pardon? Oh. For calling. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> questions on the motion? Roll, please. Trustee Lyson? Yes. Okay. Coley? Margo? Yes. Christy Bellinger? Yes. Christy Feinberg? Yes. President Hilbert? Yes. We finally got approval from the county um, as far as the uh, community development, the uh, sidewalk project to um, We made the payment. We finally got approval from the county, and we made the payments to the area for the sidewalk. And now we're asking for approval to pay the fifty-seven thousand three hundred ten dollars that we were holding back. Correct. Correct. Submit. What was the dollar amount that we were holding back? 
the uh, server, when uh, Mr. Evanchek went into the, his house, his door was slightly ajar, and the server took the opportunity to take a couple pictures that I will share with you guys. If the, if the attorney thinks it's okay, then we share them. I'm having trouble hearing you, President Holt. I'm sorry. Mr. Kelly, would it be proper for for us to share the pictures that were taken by the server? Um, President Nobert's asking if it would be proper to share the photos that were taken by the uh, server um, up through the doorway. Yeah. That was taken by the process server? I mean, I don't know what the outcome about that. It was taken by the process server and claimed you and left the door open after it walked off the side. I don't have a problem with the council. I don't, I don't see anything wrong with Okay. Then we will share those pictures. We will see something not very nice. During his, uh, during his work on this, Mr. Kelly has also uh, uncovered the owner of this property, the actual owner of this property, Mr. Mr. Evanchuk. Correct me, Mr. Kelly, he is currently purchasing on a land contract? It's unclear what exactly is going on with the property. Technically, Mr. Evanchuk is the equitable owner who, for all intents and purposes, would be the one that would have been able to actually enter by the bid for a mediation of the property. So, <coughs> the and door really only has the right to personal property, that being the proceeds from the land contract sale. But I, I was finally able to contact the land contract that door, but the legal owner, if you will, and he, um, he won't call me back. I can't find him. His physical address, although I have his cell phone number, I call him, I call him, he won't answer. And so, um, I mean, where we're at right now is just trying to, if we have to dismiss this and bring another action later to condemn the whole place, then we'll have to serve that other technical owner as well. But we don't even know if he has paid the land contract off, and it is indeed his, and it's just, there's never been a deed been recorded in this record. So we're not even sure of the status, and I can't get that answer out of the land contract. I'm sure everything with the pandemic doesn't really make it any easier. So, just so everyone's up to date that there is there are some issues there, and uh, hopefully at some point we can get this resolved. Alrighty. Are there any questions for Mr. Kelly or Mr. Ann? Payment of bills. Make a motion that we pay the November bills in the amount of $208,102.86. Support. It's been moved and supported that support we pay the November bill in the amount of $208,102.86. Any questions on the motion? Roll, please. Trustee Meisner? Yes. Trustee Bollinger? Yes. Trustee Feinmore? Yes. Trustee Piccoli? Yes. Trustee uh, President Gilbert? Yes. Motion carried. Trigger items. Total village cash asset of $5,501,739.99. Would you repeat that, please? Mm -hmm. Five million five hundred one thousand seven hundred thirty-nine dollars and ninety-nine cents. Make a motion that we file and receive the treasurer's report. Support. The move that we file and receive the treasurer's report. Questions on the motion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. First items. Clerk is requesting the uh, December items by November 28th. Unfinished business. Mr. Meissen. All right, so speed tables. Um, <clears throat> I forwarded over some quotes uh, that I received up regarding speed tables, uh, as well as a couple more um, 
emails of uh, agreements, um, agreement with the uh, with the proposal. Um, admittedly, I apologize. I didn't reach out to our DPD, DPW superintendent. I think we had agreement at the last meeting that he was okay with it, or at least trialing it. Um, <clears throat> some of the proposals that we received um, were for the speed tables ranging roughly between like $4,000 and $10,000. It definitely had a big range on price. This is just for the material to be received. This would then require like our DBW or if we would maybe have to do like an RFP to have it installed by a, you know, through our engineering firm. Um, it sounds like most of these speed tables, they're, you know, they're laid out on the, on the ground wherever you want them to be installed and then you drill some holes into the concrete, you epoxy a sleeve into place, which then allows the um, speed table to be bolted into place. Um, one of the things I will admit I'm a little bit disappointed to hear uh, when talking with some of these vendors, um, most of them will not openly um, support the idea of having the speed table in place in the winter with plows. They said it'll probably hold up for a couple of years, but it may, it may cause some damage and eventually the plows might rip the, the speed tables up, off the ground. Most of them said they would recommend in the winter, when you, once you really get into the, the actual snow months, to actually then unbolt the speed table and remove it from the, from the pavement. Which was really disappointing to hear, because um, that's obviously a hindrance with, with what we you know, deal with on a seasonal basis. Um, the only other option that I could think of if we were going to do something like this would be the asphalt or something like that, which would be more permanent and, you know, uh, easier to, uh, it would be more durable compared to the recycled rubber. Um, but obviously that, you know, that's, that's a permanent thing. It's not like you can just bolt and unbolt this. And I think one of the, one of the benefits of this product, um, that we, that I liked is that you actually could unbolt it, and if you really wanted to, you could actually move it somewhere and reinstall it over there if need be. Um, so I don't know. Uh, in all honesty, I'm a little bit at an impasse on this one. I, I'm not exactly sure how much we want to pursue. Um, I don't know if we want to totally give this up, but the, it's definitely something that we have to consider that you know once we start having snow flying, um, we do risk damaging the, the unless unless the DPW is somehow able to really work around the, the snow tables or I mean the speed tables with the snow. Um, one of the vendors, um, unfortunately, the I can't remember which to be completely honest. One of the vendors was actually talking about wanting to work with a municipality to get more data um, about how well their product would hold up in the case of, uh, of winter months and snow plows and everything like that. Um, and I said, well, you know, if you're looking for a municipality to kind of give us the data, <laughs> we're, your, we're your team. Um, so, uh, you know, I can go back and, and, and talk to them if you guys want me to further pursue that. But, um, you know, in all honesty, when I kind of heard that from all the vendors, it kind of, you know, turned it slightly turned me off to the entire idea, uh, complete disclosure there. With, um the, the primary location was going to be on River Oak. That was, that was at least one of the initial ideas. Oh, yeah. 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 With the River Oak being sold right now by Lombardo on the east side. Right. Yeah, for it's sold out. It's sold out, and the west side is moving right along. Right. Um, with the new home being constructed in that area, do you think that would help curtail some of the speeders? That was one of the things I was thinking too. I mean, you know, just the, the eventual increase in people parking on the street yeah. could um, could impact the amount of speeders. Although, you know, full disclosure, one of our, um, we did have a resident who was planning on attending today. Um, I don't think he was able to make it for, for um, different reasons, but he was actually going to be asking council to make River Oaks one-way park, or uh, one-sided parking um, to remove the, the ability to park on one side of the street. Um, so, you know, it's, it's definitely recognized that River Oaks, specifically between New Haven Elementary and Arlington, is definitely um, a problem. It's just how do we best combat it. Um, but yeah, once construction starts, 
uh, they're going to have to slow down or else they're going to start hitting heavy machinery and or, or, or <laughs> trailers and Oops. stuff. Yeah. Hopefully one of those phones are built and occupied uh, and then the with. Uh, the price is up. I mean, we're looking at $4,000, $5,000 without installation. And one of my thoughts is, is as someone who drives with some urgency too, um, <laughs> we, uh, the, I think we should have a discussion with, like as a council or, or have a representative talk to the Macomb County Sheriff about how they patrol our areas instead of just, you know, focusing on, right now I don't think that they focus on River Oaks Drive or the subdivisions as much as they do to say Main Street or Gratiot. Maybe have a conversation with them about where, you know, where they're doing their patrols to be more effective at, at curtailing speeding because, I mean, you know, um, I'm looking at, a, at the, the speed table, and if I'm in a hurry, I'm, I'm going over there, but a, a sheriff will slow me down. So, I mean, yeah. you know, if we can probably have that conversation, if that's going to be more cost-effective or, you know. Yeah, even bringing up their uh, camera, their uh, speed uh, yeah, I've, to do I've, I've called multiple times and asked for them to do that. And they they always kind of give me a good word that they will, and then it never never happens, unfortunately. But you know, maybe as a council, if we do, I was calling out to put the uh, Decora Park hat on instead of council hat. Okay. Maybe maybe as a council, if we're if they have a new uh, new captain in charge of the road patrol. Uh, captain Daniels is taking over a different division. Well, once he recovers from this. Massive heart attack. Oh, sure. <laughs> uh, you know, I'll reach out tomorrow and, and you know, see if we can at least get that uh, speed wagon, the speed where we play. Is that yeah. on the trailer? Yeah, the trailer out here. And, and if not, that may just <laughs> give those speeders some sense that, oh, maybe the sheriff is lurking around the corner and, you know, we need to slow it down. When I do see Macomb County Sheriff's Department out on River Oaks, um, it's very, very common for them to be pulling cars over. I mean, it, it's it's like it's honestly it's like shooting fish in a barrel. I mean, it's, it doesn't take much. Okay. I mean, if they even if they just hung out on Salt River Circle so that they were kind of off of the path, you know, and kind of not as visible, especially with the stop sign that's right there. Yeah. People blow through that Halloween night. It was it was honestly it was really troubling on um, Halloween night. How many people blew through that stop sign yeah. nonstop all through the night? Mm -hmm. With all the kids, it was just really troubling. Good. All right, so are we going to table this? And I'm good with tabling it. We can give the phone County Sheriff's Department a shot. Okay. Parks and Rec update. Mr. Hazyak, is, um, is he participating? He sent uh, an email. I think we'll be participating. There's no parts and rack update in there. No, okay. Yeah. No. That's what I was looking forward to. Nope. And I could kind of give an unauthorized version. Well, we do have a representative of Parks and Rack here. If she's willing to oh. okay. Yes? Stand up. All right. Hey, sorry. No, thanks, Brian. <laughs> <laughs> um, Parks and Rec is, is going pretty good. Unfortunately, we had a setback due to COVID. We're not able to take one of the tours that we're looking forward to for the, our other 47 mile parcel thing. Um, so that was shut down, but hopefully we'll, we'll pick that right back up when it's safe and everybody will go. But um, we're working with um, Ms. Pridemore to try and get a, a parade through town to um, big, we don't want everybody coming out to see the Christmas tree. Can't do that because of COVID again. And so we're going to try and bring the parade to them. And we're working on a map right now to go all throughout all the, the major um, neighborhoods in our in our area and bring the show to the residents. So um, hopefully soon you'll see a sign up and people can participate. We're not looking for like floats. We're looking for more like people in their cars. It may not be cold. Who knows? <laughs> But we're going to decorate the cars up, and um, we need the fire departments in on it, and we're just going to travel around town and hopefully spread some joy. So um, other than that, um, we still have, um, what else is in the works? I'm trying to think. I saw the sample uh, flyer, the sample. Uh, oh, did you? Go, the EDDM flyer? Yeah. I haven't seen that, so is it, it have you seen it? I don't know. Yeah, I, I saw it today. Okay, well then that, it should be out soon, correct? I wasn't sure if that had been put through. Okay, okay. Well, EDDM, the flyers have been um, sent to the printers. The printers, I told, are, were in the process of still printing them. 
but it sounds like they're out because if we got a sample, they said they would go out shortly after. So hopefully with that being done um, right now, at the beginning of January, we'll have another one that goes out that has more definite dates and just a little bit more clarity for the residents. But advertising is out, so it's going good. We're doing what we can given COVID. And also we're um, working with uh, Haven Place to do a food drive for their um, drive through dinner night for Thanksgiving. Um, we're working with NHG and hopefully putting some bins out. Um, DPW is going to give us some boxes and we're going to go to local mm -hmm. restaurants and set some donation areas out there too. So what's come along for what we can do? Yeah. Sorry to point the uh, Parks and Rec chairwoman on the <laughs> <laughs> I do want to say though, I mean, it is amazing what all they've done for us this year, um, considering the circumstances with, with COVID and everything. And <laughs> The, the, I really like the, the fact that, you know, I, I don't know who it was that came up with the idea, but being able to do the parade around the village um, awesome. instead of doing the Christmas tree lighting, that really shows out of the box thinking, and it's really cool. Call from the floor. Teresa just wanted to say that planning didn't meet, so there wasn't an update on yes. yes, right. Yeah. 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 Call from the floor. I believe we had... Um, an update from two individuals that are on the Zoom call. Um, trying to send them an unmute request. Okay, um, I think they unmuted. So, uh, Gavin and Danya, if you want to go ahead and speak. Gavin and Tanya, you there? Yeah, all right, it looks like they're, uh, they just dropped out. So it doesn't look like they were going to be able to talk. <laughs> we tried. Well, thank you. <laughs> Call from the floor. Call from the table. Um, I did want to bring up, I noticed on um, the Michigan First Responders Hazard Pay that um, they released the um, updated uh, round on, I think it was the 30th, um, and New Haven's application for the 18,000 was approved. Yes. So we did. We yeah. were we were looking into that. Yeah. That was one of my updates. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> uh, there's a few updates. Um, I met with Lombardo about a week ago, 10 days ago, and they shared with me um, the desire that they're going to be coming to planning either in December or January with a new site plan for the Pembroke expansion of the Gratiot. Uh The drawing that I saw and I meant to I don't know what I did with that for drawing, but I'm going to make copies for a council, but I must have left them in some of the way. I don't even have that. Uh, it's a 66 lot expansion that will take the existing Pembroke out to grass. <coughs> and the I was told, and I don't know if I was told this intentionally or unintentionally, but they don't plan on it being part of the Pembroke area. Sorry about that. <laughs> I don't know why. I don't know the reasoning, the rationale behind that. Yeah, but, okay. um, and the other one is the uh, hazard pay was approved by the state. Uh, so we will get our, uh, uh, we should be getting our $18,000 reimbursement that was paid out. Um, we were also informed recently, uh, we got a call from MDOT that our grant application for the realignment of 27 and Gratiot has been approved, but it is a 2022 grant. Mm. Um, it's an 80 20 grant. They will award, uh, they have awarded us $172,000. And the village portion will be approximately eighty-five thousand dollars for the realignment of the Gratiot Twenty-Seven intersection. And Mr. Picoli has been working with MDOT 
and him guy is going to do some upgrades, some production upgrades um, right. at that intersection. Um, I think you all can see what's going on out in the core as far as uh, Pembroke. They have so uh, rural on the east side, the west side is available. Then they're going to go back to that first street uh, town, so wherever that first block is. They're going to sell that area and leave Salt River Circle for last. Okay. Um, in our conversation, they express an interest that they're going to, that they intend on coming back into Amherst. Lombardo still owns approximately 33 lots in Amherst. Um, and they also express their interest, depending on what happened with the 47 acres as far as the park development, is that they would be interested in possibly purchasing the back of that 47 acres, which would have been Amherst 5. So they would be interested in purchasing that from the village um, if we were willing to sell it. Okay. Um, and for those of you who have made it, who have may have noticed, there's book boxes. There's one outside this door. There's one at Fountain Park, and there's one at Community Park. And it's a project being done by uh, a young man who for his uh, Eagle Scout project. His name is David Martin. And part of the project is you bring a book, you take a book. And I, I've seen a lot of books being taken. I've seen a lot of books being dropped off. So there's always you know, um, a vast assortment of books. I'm going to meet the young man tomorrow because he has excess money. He has leftover money from his project that he wants to donate uh, to the village. <clears throat> and I don't know if it's going to the park and rec department or if the fire department has like a, a community fund or something because I think he's being sponsored by the fire department. So I will have this conversation with him tomorrow. What was his last name again? David Martin. Martin. opportunity to think. Um, Mrs. Mitchell, I love the hair, it's <laughs> <Nice> going away. <laughs> uh, Mr. Haziak and Mr. Rodfe for their service to this community. Uh, it's been an enjoyable time. I think two years for you, two years for you, and I think four for Mark. Um, and of course this is my sign off also, and it's been my absolute pleasure to serve this community, to work with this council. I think we've come a long ways, we've done a lot of good things, and there's a lot of good work that still needs to be done. And to give my uh, support, my total support to Mrs. Pridemore, um, anything that I can do to make this transition easy and going forward, if there's anything Told me I'm not to tear my hair out. <laughs> <laughs> hey, it's out so I can't make a guarantee on that one. But it's it's uh, what's important to me is that we as a village continue moving forward. And and uh, I'm going to be around. I'll probably uh, we assume my my seat against that back wall that I occupied for a lot of years prior to taking this seat up here. But I'm not going to do far, and if anybody has any questions or you think there's some information that I may have that you want or need, feel free. My phone number is not going to change. Um, so just reach out, and I will make myself available. But like I said, the bottom line for me is that we as a village continue moving forward. With that, Uh, before we do an old motion, I do want to act exactly your sentiments. I do want to I do want to say really quickly that I appreciate all your time that you and all the uh, effort that you put into the village. Uh, I'd like to kind of think of you as kind of the, the dad of the village. So uh, 
You know, and I, I thought it was kind of fit, fitting because when you said that you were going to be taking the seat behind the wall uh, or against the wall, uh, I kind of thought of uh, Mr. Drake, who actually happens to be here today, <laughs> that, you know, one of our past presidents is here on a regular basis and always, you know, participating in the meetings. Uh, now we'll have two, two of you guys that are uh, kind of looking over us and making sure that we're all doing what we're supposed to be doing. So, um, but also, yeah, to, to, to our treasurer and to our clerk, and uh, Trustee Heshek, I uh, really appreciate everything that they've done over the years, and uh, it's going to be good. Hopefully, you guys get to enjoy your you get to enjoy your uh, retirement. Okay. Motion <laughs> 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 to the north. Make a motion to adjourn at eight p.m. Yes. Yes. Support. Mark, let's get the clock changed. It's 7.56. Your first order of duty, uh, you get to Morris. Give me five